Hello, how are you doing all of my princesses? I hope during this pandemic that you are doing okay. You are in my prayers as well as really everyone in the world is in my prayers in this very hard time that we're in. Yet yeah, let's keep the faith. Let's keep staying encouraged. So y'all, I want to talk about in this coming out of your shell, um, coming out your shell series rebuilding you so little girl i know you're going through so much abuse in your home i know that you're going through abuse outside your home it's like you already got to deal with this evil world outside yet you have to deal with it inside your house too and I'm really speaking from hearing from some students when I used to sub in um, the Pulaski County, Little Rock, Arkansas area and other places as well. Um, it really hurt to hear these children's stories. Um, it hurt me dearly. I remember I did an exercise. I was at the uh, a charter school in Jacksonville and I asked the students because I see their behavior and the, the session, I think it was called the release session. I told them to get out a piece of paper and a pen and I'm asking them, why are you so angry? Why are you so angry and what what do you want to see different happen in your world i'm sorry this is a very touchy subject because i'm thinking back on some of the letters that i still have and i prayed over um and what what some of these kids was telling me and i i could never think of because I'm a parent. So how some of these children were telling me how they were treated by their own parents, I had to get them to understand through my experience of life in that area. Honey, we we are all broken. We, I wasn't making an excuse. I was trying to get them to understand why they are dealing with that with their parent. And it's because they come from that background too. Especially in the black community. We are told not to talk about certain things. We're told to keep it in. And then we're wondering why our children is running around in and out of jail or doing this and that or having no re respect because we're blaming them for really something that they have they don't have any control over as children. And they're respecting them in their adult years to get it together. But that is pretty much not easy to do if you've been suppressing it for so long. Therapy or any a Christian counselor or just a Christian mentor or not even just, you know, I'm a Christian. So I'm going to suggest a Christian mentor. Because the way that society, this culture movement, has been teaching us how to be as people, um, as we see in our world, has been creating chaos and a problem. And I know that that's nothing but Satan. That's nothing but the enemy. And this is my truth. This is me sharing the things that the Holy Spirit shows me when me and him talk. When I study the Bible. When I worship. When I'm around people and I'm getting triggered by stuff and he's showing me, no, this is what it is. So these are the things I was trying to get the students to understand, not to just give them relief, but a healing to understanding why they're being treated like that in their home. Now, rebuilding you. Rebuilding you means that 
you're going to have to, my princesses, you're going to have to take what you have been taught that is so toxic, honey. I mean, that is so toxic. And it's like you have to reprogram yourself. You have to deprogram yourself from culture, from society, and you have to rebuild yourself within the kingdom of God and the word of God, which brings healing and a lot of other wonderful stuff that society, honey, is not giving. The world's love is different from God's love. Let me, let me show you this, okay? So I have my Holy Bible and I read the King James Version. Um, this is the only one that I can really understand. Every other Bible other than New King, King James, it is, it is too, it is, it's too everyday work. It's too, it's, how can I put it? It's like I'm, I'm reading something from the way that we talk here in America. Like everyday talk other than me getting from the King James version, the way that the Holy Spirit talks. So in Matthew 633, let me show you this. Okay. This has helped me a lot. So in Matthew 633, it says, but Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, let me break that down. But seek ye first. I had to learn that I can't keep going to people substance like certain. Oh, I'm, I'm going to just keep it real. I couldn't keep going to people, drugs, or anything else that was going to give me a temporary fix for my problem. I had to keep going to God. No matter how many times I had to cry, pray, worship, study the word, even stay around those that are God-like, I had to, I had to go to God first. And trust him to bring the program or whoever in my life to root out this pain. Root out these abusive memories. Hmm. So, going into the kingdom of God. So, not only am I going and I need to seek him first and our people and things. But I need to... I need to learn God's system. The kingdom of God is a system. Just like Caesar down here in this world has a system. Yes, the world has a system. Society, culture has a system. And in this system, you have to have a piece of cotton. You have to have money. But in the kingdom of God, in God's system, faith. Is the currency to bring things forth from heaven onto earth. So let me let me give you an example. Mm, let's see here. So God said, Let there be light in the book of Genesis, the first chapter, and there was light. Why? Because he believed what he spoke. And read Mark 11, chapter 22 through 26. That backs that up. Which even backs this up too. Which I'm talking about, Matthew 6, 33. God believed in what he was confessing. Four keys of faith. That's a whole nother lesson. I'm going to teach you about that a whole nother, a whole nother video. Listen. He believed in what he confessed, so that's why it happened. As, as a person, at times, I get impatient just like anyone else. And I will ask God for things 
and then try to do it in my own power because you're taking too long, God. I'm just, just for real. Lord, you're taking too long for me. And then I learned within that impatience. No, I need to wait on you because you know what's best for me. So I need to work your system. I need to keep speaking. I need to, well, I need to keep hearing your word. I need to keep, I need to, as I'm hearing it, I need to let it sink. And as it's sinking, I'm going to confess it. That's believing. And then boom, here comes the doer part. Here comes the action. I know it's hard for us to wait, but it's worth it. And society and this culture down here teaches us to be impatient. Technology is supposed to be used for a good thing, but it's, it's teaching us how to rush. And if I don't get it and I don't get it now, then I don't want it. No, that's not how it works. I'm sorry. It's just not how it works. Well, it works. It might work here for this world, you know, this season, this time. But it doesn't work that it doesn't work like that in the kingdom of God. As as I've been establishing a relationship with him and been for a long time. I need to wait on you, Lord. He's patient. Like he God does things where he is not in a rush at all. At all. And I, I'm very grateful of him for that. Cause I see where you can rush. It's like rushing, you know, rushing a plant. You're watering this plant. You're trying to rush this plant to grow. You can't. You have to wait. You got to plant it, water it, let the sun heat on it, and then wait for it to grow. And it's you, then boom, here come your harvest. So let's get in. <laughs> and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. His righteousness. That means his ways. What is holy, the way he thinks, the way he moves, the purpose that he has for my life, his righteousness, his characteristics too, the fruits of the spirit, love, peace, joy, self-control, meekness, long-suffering, and long-suffering means patience. It doesn't mean how much pain you can endure. Because God doesn't want us to endure any pain. That was always Satan's agenda for us. And even what we're going through in this world right now, Satan trying to take us down with him. He don't want us to dwell with God forever. Because he can never, he's separated from God. So he's miserable. Misery like company. And that's what he's doing. He wants you to join him in the misery other than have the promises of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. That means everything that is in the kingdom of God will be added unto you. The fruits of the spirit, the spirit of God himself, and it, honestly, even material things and all these things. But seek ye the kingdom of God, his system, his, his holiness, what he requires. And you should have these things with patience. <sighs> My babies. My little royal princesses. Wait on God. Seek him. Have a relationship with him. And you know how you do that? Because I understand that we all have been told not to do this, not to do that. The Bible says this. But we haven't been given a clear picture, an image, or somebody to break down what that is. How am I supposed to, you know, go about that? How am I supposed to watch out for when what you're telling me not to do is presented? What am I supposed to do? 
especially if you're teaching kids. It irritated me so much that being around the school district and just parents, period, y'all really think that your kids are adults. Oh, we think that our kids are adults because I don't want to bash nobody. This is not what this is about. It's about bringing up facts of what is hindering us. And I, this is all people. What is hindering us from moving, keep moving in the direction that in the, in the purpose of our life that God has for us and why he created us. It's not to make you feel bad about yourself or nothing. But you have to understand if you want to, if we have to understand, I'm going to say I don't want to bash nobody. Let me start to say you. If we want to see better progress within ourselves, within our children, not only do we have to be that example, I mean, but we're, we, it's like we have to stop getting so personal in our personal feelings. I'm speaking on experience as a parent. We have to stop getting in our, in our, like personal emotions and look at logic and look at facts I need to change for my children and this is the conclusion I had to come with with myself with some things that I've noticed that wasn't my fault on why emotionally or mentally or spiritually I'm I'm dysfunctioning around me instead of functioning so I didn't want my kids to go through what I went through. And I don't want to not be emotionally available for my kids. I want them to strive. I want to, when they come to me, I'm going to go the extra mile to make sure that my children are have in every category, you know, of their life, more healthy cope, coping skills that will help them grow healthy in the world so that health can affect everybody else around them who doesn't have it. My princess, be patient with your growth. Don't let nobody rush you in to healing, in your healing. Don't let nobody rush you. Keep going to God. Keep finding something on YouTube, books, programs, groups, anything in a healthy way. Not drugs and men or all that other stuff or, you know, material stuff. Don't use that as a coping, coping skill to help you move past and literally deprogram yourself from how society has taught us to be the word this is what has helped me the word of god he's my boo and in this moment of my life i am very excited what he's doing and when he removes friends when he removes people out of your life when he removes lovers out of your life, like, you got to get to a place where you discern that and you see that, that that's really for the best for you. Because there's certain things in people that God knows that's not good for you. You know, that, you know I'm saying, he knows things that's going on in people that are not good for you and he will remove them. So surround yourself in an environment that is God-like, that wants to obey God. Because I'm speaking from experience, sinning, well, how can I put it? Letting my flesh get the best of me is not helping me to heal. Letting my spirit take over my flesh helps me to heal where there will be some strongholds and some other things broken that the enemy will be so mad because he's like oh my god this girl right here is maturing and i'm throwing darts at her i'm throwing stuff at her to keep her in her shell 
And she keeps rebuilding herself. She keeps building on herself. In God's word. I'm mad. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, Satan's mad. You know, he'll get mad. But you gotta, you gotta learn these tricks of the enemy. Because as you're building yourself, he will come at you with anyone or anything to knock you off your focus and your way of reaching your healing. Even if you didn't hear from your own father or your mother that you're beautiful, you didn't get the emotional and mental support that you needed, know that you can always get it from God and you let him work out the rest. At least for my young girls. I love you. You're awesome sauce. And one day, God is going to use you, your weaknesses, your strengths, your, your testimonies, your past, to help other people out there who are going through it. Because I don't have time. We don't have time to be wearing no mask and acting like ain't nothing wrong with us. Because in the word, it does say, that we are to confess our sins to one another, to confess our burdens, so we can pray for one another, so we can be healed. My assignment for you today is I want you to write in your journal, and I want you to write, how do you want to, like, where do you want to see yourself in the future from now. What is your passion? What do you want out of life? What do you want from God? What do you want? A lot of us are doing things because of what other people want us to do. And I was guilty of that. God delivered me from people pleasing, depression, a whole bunch of other stuff. And he can do the same thing for you. But write that. Get it out. It'll help. Well, all right, my princesses. Mwah. LaVoice loves you.